perfect week. <clears throat> Ooh, per- you I'm call calling it a perfect week. Really? That is quite ambitious, buddy. I'm Dude, not even you should sure. be confident, man. Wait a second. No, hold on a second. <laughs> well, you got to remember, sharp tyranny is always about the value. So even though I have profound confidence in myself to make picks, I might have to bet against you <laughs> to be fair. I mean, the likelihood of me going 10-0 and 0 is not great. It's happened before. It has happened before. It's been a while, to be honest with you. Everything good, though? You ready to run that marathon? Can I bet on you in the marathon, by the way? Yes. What we do you can. want to put the over-under at? Uh, oh, The that's average right. marathon well, for uh, men okay. is 430. All right. Uh, I'm going to say only because, you know, I've heard from BT. He was texting me the other day that you haven't uh, had a chance to do the normal routine based on, you know, I think you're in Alabama right now, getting ready to call the Bama game, right? right. So training's been interrupted, flying in, a little bit of a truncated schedule. Uh, You're a man of principle, you're a man of heart, so I'm not going to make it as bad as it could be for a (laughs) non-athlete, but I'm going to say, what's your all-time best again? What do you got? What's the best? 418. I'm going to say, you don't beat that, unfortunately. I'm going to beat Tiki down eh, about 432. Four hours, 32 minutes for Tiki, minus 110 if you're wondering about the value. All right, Teak. Appreciate the intro, buddy. Uh, we will be rooting you on for sure. Last week, five and five on the season. Listen, it's not easy. It's been it's been a rocky road for most. 40, 39, and one on this show. Barely over 500, but certainly a lot better than most. At all time, 489, 416, and 31. That's 900 plus games, uh, right around 54%. So we got four college, six pros. Let's start getting some winners to get you feeling good. Yes or no? No negative energy. You feeling good? Feeling great. All right, Santa, are you even though you were banned from Twitter? Yeah, I heard you had a rough week. Are you feeling good? Good about these picks. What Let's do you be think? Positive, yeah, nine and one. Nine and one. I like the vibe. I like the mojo. Let's crank it up. Let's go. Come on, Stu Getz. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Every show makes picks, but this show actually makes picks that'll put money in your pocket. And we've got nearly ten years of evidence to back it up. Buckle in and get back your wallets up. ready as BT pops on his shades and becomes Sharp oh, Tierney. Sharp Tierney. All right, so. As I said, four college, six pros. We're going to bag some wins. Tiki, the pressure is on. Barber saying 10-0. and 0. Santa saying 9-1. and 1. I'm saying somewhere in between. Maybe 8-1-1. One and one. Let's start cracking this. All right, I'm going to go into Tiki's former conference, the one he used to dominate back in the day. Wake, remember that game Thursday night? Mm-hmm. I was pounding 40s in my college dorm room. He slicing up the Seminoles on a Thursday night. Wake Forest, he didn't play for Wake. He didn't play for UNC either. He played for Virginia. Wake Forest, though, in the ACC. Plus two and a half. At UNC, Tar Heels 4-4. Four four. Wake Forest up to number 9 in the rankings, 8-0 on the year. They can score points. Even a couple of weeks ago, they dropped uh, 70, right? Even if you delete that, they're still putting up around 43, 44 points a game. I say that because a lot of times, the stats are inflated in college. You play a couple of bum teams, you score a lot of points. Whoa, prolific offense. But when you really take away a game or two... It's good, but it's not great. Now, Wake Forest offense is prolific. As I said, almost 44 points a game. They're getting points at Carolina. I know about Sam Howell. I know that Carolina can clip you if you're not careful. I don't think the Demons full, you know, stumble the rest of the way. I think they're going to finish this season strongly. I think they straight up win. If they do lose, it ain't going to be more than by two and a half. Wake Forest plus two and a half. On the road, bang, Deacons crank it up. Win number one. Win number two. Oh, Iowa. Disgusted with Iowa, what they did to me over the years. Huh? 7 p.m. Eastern, Big Ten Network, by the way, if you want to watch it. Now, Iowa, 6-2 and two on the year, as I said, minus 12 at Northwestern. Here's what you know about Northwestern. They're slow. They're very well coached. Smart. Very prestigious academic institution. You also know that they're three and five. What we know about Iowa is that they were woefully overrated to start. They are very pedestrian on offense. They've got a couple of injuries on defense. Minus 12 is a big nut for a team that can't crank out 80 yards or sit like fast, you know? Like Iowa's methodical. They've got to have things go. You know, seamlessly field position, run the ball. I'm not saying they're not going to win. I might surprise people. Give me Northwestern. Give me the 12 spot. I'm rolling with Northwestern. Boom. All right, Oregon. Now, I took Oregon a couple of weeks back. They rewarded us. Oregon. Oh, where's the Bearcat? The college football playoff rankings are out. Where's Cincinnati? I don't. Know. I see Oregon inside the top four. Is that wrong? I don't, I don't know if it really matters today. I think what you need to know is Oregon is good. 
And Washington is not very good. Washington's the home team. The Huskies 4-4. Four four, Oregon 7-1. Now they're laying a touchdown. All right. The weather is not going. You got to do your digging, Teak, right? You can't just, oh, I like this. You got to look at the weather. You got to use your, mm-hmm. your nationwide connections. I reached out to my CBS affiliate out there in the great state of Washington. They said, hey, sharp, look at a little sloppy, look a little dank, look at a little wet. What does it mean? It means Washington will have a rough time moving the football because they can't throw it at all, all right? I'm taking Oregon. I'm laying the point. Give me the Ducks to keep moving. They'll win by a touchdown. Oregon, boom. That's a night game, by the way, 7.30 Eastern ABC. All right. Now, Tink, I'm going to ask you to tell me what you think I'm going to do with this one before I tell you what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Pitt, minus 21 at Duke. Am I laying the big nut or am I taking it? What do you got? No, you're definitely laying this. That a boy. Not even close. He knows the deal. By the way, do you agree with that move? Without a doubt. All Duke right. Is, is, is very bad this Duke year. Duke is not good. <laughs> Pitt, somehow, like, they're still in it. I mean, six and two, and they've got a quarterback who's going to be in the NFL. Laid the three touchdowns. I'm not trying to step on Duke. Basketball season starting off, you know, the, the final go around for the great Coach K. But Duke basketball, Duke football, yikes. Lay the 21, roll with the Panthers, who will move to seven. Seven and two with absolute ease. All right, let's get to the NFL. The Texans are at the Dolphins. One Eastern on Fox. What a great game this should be. Both teams are one and seven. Yay! I mean, uh, oof, I mean, can we just like delete this game? We can't because there's money to be made. Teak. See, you got to look for value and you have to look for opportunity. Now, Tyrod Taylor, ninety something percent is going to be back, and that does change things for the Texans. Nobody likes to tone around the Dolphins right now. They won opening week. They've lost seven straight. They're laying five and a half. Flores, eh, seat's hot, no doubt. Tua playing better. I'm going with a gut, all right? Well, it's not that much of a gut. The Texans have been horrible, but I know that they'll be better with Tyrod Taylor. I'm still taking the Dolphins. I bet against the Dolphins a few times here on the segment. I'm going to roll with the Finns. I'm going to lay the five and a hook. I think the Dolphins win by about 10. Think the Texans hang around? Dolphins will cover. Minus five and a half. Miami. All right. Over on the time. You got to mix up a few of these. Over on the Vikings at the Ravens. One Eastern Fox. Three and four are the Vikes. You know I don't like the Vikings. I just... I don't believe in the Vikings. I never have. But I project, oh, BT has, pardon me, has projected that many times here on the show. Ravens are 5-2, and two, over under 49 and a half. I don't know what the hell happened to the Vikings offense a week ago. I know that it hurt Justin Jefferson on Sharp Tierney's fantasy team. was shut down, didn't do anything. Nobody did anything. But I think that changes a little bit this week. Obviously, Lamar's the showstopper. Under 50 for teams with myriad weapons. I mean, I know, again, you know, Jefferson. Thielen. I mean, you got Cook, you got Cousins, players everywhere. Lamar, Ravens, over 49 and a half. Fun game, good game in Baltimore. We're going on the over. It's the 80s. Raiders plus three at Tiki's Giants. They really don't be, be careful. Well, they don't deserve to be called the Giants anymore. They just don't. <laughs> uh, they're falling woefully short of expectations for the past decade, but. Didn't your partner kind of tell you that they were going to win a game in the last mm-hmm. uh, couple of weeks ago? Did the Giants win that game? They did. Of course they won the game because Sharp Tierney said they would. They now covered I've, last week. I, I've got a lot of respect. They covered last week, too, uh, in Arrowhead. i got a lot of respect for the Raiders here. Basaccia, two games, two wins, one Eastern CBS. Nice to have the G-Men, New York market on CBS. That'll be good. Five and two, Giants two and six. Giants could have a few more wins. I think we all know that. Washington in week two, the Falcons game a couple of weeks back, other night at Arrowhead. I'm not saying the Giants are good. I think they're a little bit better than two and six, even though they are beat up. You know what? I don't know if we're going to be as brazen to tell you, even though it's only it's three points, not that brazen. But I'm not so sure the Giants win the game. But I still, and they could, obviously. But I like the Giants to cover the three. Going across the country, Raiders have juggled a lot. Obviously, the rug situation is horrific. Uh, but it's an early start, west to east. It's really going to be 10 in their minds and in their bodies. Give it to Giants to cover the three at MetLife. Big blue. What the hell's happening to the Chargers? What is up with the Bolts? Now, to me, this is interesting. Sometimes you got to look for an overreaction, all right? And in the humble opinion, although Sharp Tierney is very rarely humble, I think everybody knows that. But in my opinion, uh, I believe that <laughs> the Eagles line with the Chargers is overinflated, all right, in the wrong direction based on what 
the Lions, pardon me, what the Eagles did to the Lions a week ago. They hung 40-plus on them, and now they're supposed to win the game. But, I, well, all well, the Eagles, oh, they scored 40-something. Oh, they won by 40 points. Mm, Chargers not playing well. What's wrong with Herbert? Two straight games, a little shaky. Eh, not buying it. The Chargers should not be favored here. Slightly they are. Plus one and a half. I actually have this more as a pick em. I'm taking the bolts. Herbert's getting healthy. Mike Williams is eating. So is Eckler. So is Keenan Allen. Chargers will beat the Eagles. Their dogs. Chargers take it. Boom. All right. I, hey, listen, Tink, your partner has not run from the big lines this year. Matter of fact, he has run toward them. Got no mm-hmm. problem laying, what was it, a couple of weeks ago, 17 and a half, right, with the uh, Cardinals and the Texans, the Rams. They were laying 14 and a half a week ago. The Bills were laying 13. I know it was 3 3 at the half last week with Miami. My Bills covered. I told you they would. Now we're faced with a very similar situation. The Bills, minus 14 and a half on the road, all right, down in Jacksonville. Or not good, but playing a little bit better. I actually think my partner, who doesn't have an official vote in the matter, but out of respect because I love him, he's, he's, you know, he's part of the show here, I think he would actually bet the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. I, I bet would. you would. You've called I their would. game. Okay. But that's why you're there, and that's why I'm here. I'm <laughs> taking the pills. I'm laying the wood. Ag- I am laying the wood until they say stop. Lay in the wood, and it is not time to stop laying wood. Bills, minus 14 and a half, will cover against the Jaguars, despite what Barber thinks. All right, and you do disagree with me on that, don't you, Tink? I do. I know even you do, though, buddy. Even though statistics this year will tell you that the big dogs, the double-digit dogs, except for, interestingly, the yeah. Giants yep. and your Jets. Of course. Are the only ones that have covered those double-digit dogs this year. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. The history would tell you that it doesn't matter how big it is, they're going to cover it. Well, the only history the that matters is the history that Sharp Tierney subscribes to, and he's been subscribing to Lane the Wood. Final one, not a big spread, although actually it's kind of big, but over under time. Now we have one over earlier. You think I'm going over or am I going under here? Titans at the Rams over under 53. What you got? Over. You always go over. Uh, we're, you see, we're not as close as I thought we were. We are <laughs> not uh, We are not in lockstep because you're not in the studio next to me because you're making a little shachich on the side, which I'm not mad at. <laughs> he, Tiki's flying around the country. He's got to make that scratch doing the Bama LSU game today. That's right. Doing CBS games in the booth. He's doing college. Make that cheese, brother. But you're wrong. I'm actually going to go under. Listen, I just told you before that without Derrick Henry, I but with all due respect, he's a good pro. He's had a good, you know, good career. I think Ryan Tannehill goes from a tier two to two to a tier three against that Rams defense. I believe the Rams will score. I don't believe the Titans will score enough points to tilt this over. I'm seeing like, uh, let me give you 34, 13. Even 33, 17, that's around 50 ish. The number's 53. I'm going under. So, in summation, here we go, top to bottom. Give me Wake plus two and a hook at UNC. Give me Northwestern plus 12 at home to cover against the Hawkeyes. The Ducks laid the seven. They'll beat the Huskies. They'll win by at least seven. Pitt, three touchdowns, no issue. They will destroy Duke, lay the 21. I'll take Miami, minus five and a hook against the Houston Texans. Vikings, Ravens, over, under, over 49 and a half. Give me Tiki's Giants to cover the three at home against the Raiders coming east, coming west to east. Chargers, this line is wrong. Plus one and a half at Philly. Bolt straight up win. Bills to eviscerate the Jags. Lay the 14 change. And of course, the Titans and the Rams under which is 53. There you go. Sharp Tierney, week nine around college and the NFL. We'll get them up on social media, even though Santa is still banned. Maybe Stu Getz is going to have to do it. We'll get those up on Twitter, Tiki, uh, at Tiki and Tierney. I tell you this all the time, and I take off the, the shades and look in the camera because this is serious. Just don't bet what you don't have. Like, we have fun here. Listen, I lost last night. Not much, but I lost. I'll tell you when I win. I lo- BT lost, not me. Sharp Tierney never loses. I lo- BT lost. <laughs> <laughs> but this stuff is not easy, and there's a reason why those casinos are built in the desert, and there's free shrimp and free wine and free steak and free jacuzzis and big beds because they win. So be smart, have fun, get a little sweat, be responsible. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.